morning. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I thank you for the word of God, that it has the power to transform lives, that it has the power to change mindsets, that it has the power to break off the strongholds that have been holding our lives and keeping us back from the blessings, the prosperity, from the goodness that is God uh, in our lives. And so I just pray that, Lord, you would break those this morning, that as in we just begin to pursue you at a greater level, that, Lord, you would make us more like you. And when we become more like you, we become better fathers, better mothers, better friends, better sons, better daughters. We simply just become better. And so, Lord, that's what we're asking for every single day, just a little bit better so that we could be more like you. That, Lord, I know we always say that at the end of my life, I want you to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. But, Lord, I want you to be able to say that about me right now. I don't want to have to wait. I want you to be able to say every single day, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because, Lord, I just want to be one that serves you and is always looking to advance the kingdom of heaven. And we love you this morning. Be with our pastor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, yeah, this morning uh, when pastor asked me and Joseph to preach, he was like, uh, hey, man, you, your dad's still around. Why don't you preach for me? Okay. And then, it, and then he says a week later, hey, I'm going to Kenneth's. Uh, okay, well, uh, either way, I'm excited. Uh, so we, we're going to be preaching for him this morning. And again, it, 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 Joseph's sermon is going to be different. If you get a chance, go out there, hear him. I promise you, the way the word gets illustrated to you has the power to change your life forever. And I, J.J. could get up here and simply just read the Bible to you, and that should be able to change your life because that's how powerful this thing is. This thing literally has the power to change your life. And so this morning, I just want to talk about what are you pursuing, right? So I love fishing. If you didn't know that about me, I like to fish. I like to hunt. I like to be outside, really. That's the biggest thing. Just put me outside. And so uh, this morning... I was talking to my wife, and it was like, as soon as pastor asked me, David, will you preach? It was like, download from the Holy Spirit. He's like, okay, I got you. I'm like, Father's Day, okay. I know a lot of them dads would rather be fishing than be in there listening to me because that's what I would like to be doing. So uh, I was like, I know what I'm going to talk about, but I want to talk about it something a little different this morning. So we've heard, I mean, I can guarantee you, everybody and every man in here has heard some sort of sermon about fishing, right? Fishers and men. What lure you using in life? All these things that are attracting men, right? Because th that's what we do as communicators. We're trying to grab an audience, right? We want, we want you to understand. And sometimes we'll use illustration because then we're like, oh, yeah, for the simple ones like me, I need an illustration every once in a while, right? I want, I want to see something so that I can remember that something. So in life, I just want to talk about the fact that we're always being cast out and not not like a demon not like i do to my children when they're annoying me cast out get out the room go 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 right not like that but god is literally sending us he's literally casting us so we've always heard sermons from the perspective of you know in in life you got lures and we're trying to attract people right we got baits for all kinds of things pastor even uses them the four h's right he wants to Hot rods, horses, and empty in hell, right? And so we got all these things that we love, and that's all bait, and that's good. We need bait in our lives. We, we are bait in our lives. And so I want to come from a different perspective this morning. We have a Father in heaven, and he loves us, right? H, you feel like Jesus loves you? Yeah, <laughs> had to, right? We're here. So me and you, we're here. I know Jesus loves me. I'm still here, okay? So... I wanted to talk about the fact that we have a father in heaven and he loves us so much that like the Bible says, an arrow in the hand of a mighty warrior. Well, that arrow in his hand isn't very good. It's pretty short. It doesn't serve as a very good weapon. It breaks as soon as I stab something. But if I put it into a bow and I send it, then all of a sudden it becomes something. Huh, Tommy? I mean, they've been a lot of elephants and crazy large animals have fallen to a man with a bow, right? Why? Because it was sent, and it was sent with a purpose. And in our lives, our Father in heaven is always sending us. If we're in work, guess what? He sent us. He said, hey, listen, H, 
I'm going to send you today. I'm going to send you out. I want you to catch a fish. What kind of fish is he looking for? He looking for one. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because God loves all of his children. And every single person on this planet is worth being cast at. Why do I love Walmart? My wife will tell you. Because they can't get away from me. They stuck there. I'm going to talk to you whether you like it or not. You got a vest on. You got customer service. You have to talk to me today. You stuck behind that cash register. We going to talk. I'm going to find out how your day is, what you're up to, because I got you. And so I feel like because of the gift in my life, and, and that's not a gift necessarily. It's something I had to develop. As a kid, I wasn't always the most outgoing, wasn't always, but I had to develop that because I realized and recognized really quick that God had a purpose on my life to be able to communicate the gospel. And guess what? Same ones on your life. God didn't call you to be a pastor. You don't have to be a pastor to be able to tell people about Jesus. That's one of the worst misconceptions the American church has ever done. No, he called pastors to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, right? He called me to go Walmart. He called me to be evangelist. He called me to be teacher. He called me to be a preacher. He called me to be a, you know, prophet, whatever I need to be in that moment. That's my bait. Jesus is always good enough. He's always the master bait, okay? There's nothing on the planet that's more attractive than Jesus Christ himself. I promise you. Why did 10, 15, 20,000 people show up and he had to feed them? Because there was something on his life that was so magnetic, so strong. He didn't have Facebook. He wasn't out there just, hey, guys, I'm going to be at the edge of Sea of Galilee. Come see me. Look at this crazy man with a prophecy. He didn't have to do that. The power of God was on his life in such a way that it was like people were magnetized. They were like, I have to be where this man is because he opens the eyes of the blind. The dead are raised. The sick are healed. The bound are unbound. I need to be like that man. I need to find that man. And so this morning, I just simply want to talk about the fact that God is always casting us. He could cast me far. He could cast me short. The fact that I was born in California and somehow in Texas today means he cast me out there. And then he said, guess what? I got a new assignment for you. There's new fish that I want you to catch. OK, here we go. Right. My wife was five months pregnant. She was going to a new place without a mama, without a daddy, without nothing except for me. Poor thing. <laughs> Thank God there was you guys because we wouldn't have made it, okay? Listen, I remember that first one, Miss Marie, and, and they put on that baby shower for her. It made, bless my wife to the point that she was like, okay, this, I could be okay in this house. I knew that I was going to be nurtured in this house simply because people loved her enough to said, you know what, JJ's coming, we going to throw a baby shower for her. We didn't have nothing. We, I borrowed my dad's truck to move down here. I'm like, all right, here we go. We're going to find out some way to get there. Uh, Pastor Jerry, yeah, yeah you want to come run a camp? Uh, sure, absolutely. If that's where I can catch some fish, I'm going. And it just so happened that there were some ponds out there that I get to fish all the time. But uh, that was just part of the bait to get me here. I know it. I know it. So in my life, I get excited because the fact that God has called us to be fishers of men at the end of the day. And you know what? God is the one that's running the bait. God is the one that's casting us out. He knows where the fish are. The bait doesn't always understand that a fish is getting ready to bite me. Okay? All it knows is I'm pursuing the one that's reeling me in. I am in pursuit of the one that is pulling the line. And what is God doing? He's casting us out every single day, sending us to work. Hey, there's some people at work today. I need you to tell them about me. Hey, here's some people at work today. I need you to tell them about me. Hey, here's some people at work today. I need you to tell them about me. And it's like constantly we're going, okay. Right? And if we're not careful, we're exactly like that bait. We're not moving. We're not doing anything. We're just sitting there going, floundering around, right? You throw a crankbait out there. It just sits there. 
but it's being retrieved in. It's being reeled in. And if we're smart, we're being awakened to that. If we're smart, we're understanding that the kingdom of God is near and that there are people that are waiting for us simply to do a little twitch every once in a while. Do something that catches their attention because some fish will bite simply out of an irritation. They don't even need to be hungry. I just did enough to irritate them. What does pastor always say? He said, I'm not pastor, I'm pester, right? Sometimes you just got to pester somebody enough that they'll flip you off in a, in a community store and come for the rest of their lives and call you pastor simply because you pestered them enough that they said, Wait, what are you about? Wait, you're a terrible pastor. What do you mean? What are you talking about? But he knew at that moment, I'm going to pester this woman because there's something on her life, right? And if you don't know, he's talking about Birdie. There was a lady that he went to a community, and he, he got flipped off by her the first time. And then she started calling him pastor. So listen, you never know the fact that when I'm being cast out, my life could literally impact somebody else's life. Her, her husband, her husband's father, they all started going to the church simply because he was at a community hardware store and he pestered her. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let me be a pester if that's what I got to be. Let me be a blister if that's what I got to be. So this morning in Romans 2, 4 through 11, it's a little long, but I'm going to read it to you real quick. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, the forbearance and the long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath, re revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds, according to his deeds. Now, I can tell you as a daddy, I'm getting rendered to me according to my deeds. My kids remember most of the good. But they can tell you the bad real quick. Just ask JJ. She'll tell you. So I'm, re I'm rendering my good deeds. It says, eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of a man who does evil of the Jews first and also the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, the Jew first and also the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. Listen, God is always simply doing this. We always said, that, oh, there's no partiality. God doesn't judge different. No, no, no. What he's saying is he's going to judge you according to your doings, no matter who you are. No matter what color you are, no matter how old, no matter how young, the fact is God is always judging back to you according to what you have given, what you have done. Not because my daddy was good, not because my grandpa was good, because of what you did. You take those same things of honor. I'm grateful for the fact that my dad's here this morning. You know, my, I, if you don't know this, I'm adopted. And so my dad adopted me when I was five or six years old, somewhere in there. I didn't, I didn't know my dad. My dad passed away when I was, what, one, two? And so he's been my dad. It's not a, even a question. It's not like a Tommy understands. He was adopted. Look, I have a dad now. But even if you never had a dad, you have a father in heaven. And I cannot reiterate this enough because some dads aren't biological. Some dads are neighbors. Some dads are uncles. Some dads are grandpas. Some dads are whatever. The fact is, I take the responsibility of helping to nurture you. That's dad. That's it. It's not about, oh, yeah, I gave birth to you. No, there's a lot of people that gave birth to people in this world that were never dads. You know, you can say father, dad, interchangeably, whatever. You know, the truth is, if I'm going to call somebody dad, it's because they fathered me. They helped me. They gave me understanding. We have a father in Pastor Jerry. He's a spiritual father to many of us, right? Why? Because he's helping us. He's nurturing us. He's allowing the Holy Spirit into his life in such a way that he's teaching us so that we could be better men, better moms, better dads, better uncles, whatever. You can put in any adjective there you want, but God should simply be making us better. 
Why? Because he's making us like him. So this. Pursue. Follow someone or something in order to catch or attack them. Now that sounds like a crazy thing. Catch or attack. But in the Bible, it talks about pursue all the time. It said, and they pursued them. And they pursued them. But the truth is, in life, we're pursuing something. Every single day, we pursue something. Whether it's the American dream. Or it's, you know, a spouse. It's a better job. It's what we're always pursuing something. We're running after something. But we have to be the ones that choose that. Now, when God, when Jesus was on the earth, he said there were two different kinds of fathers. He said there was a father in heaven. And then he looked at Peter, Mr. Sane himself, and he said, your father, the devil. Now, wait up. Peter is saved. He's the one that had the revelation that Jesus, his daddy ain't the devil. But what was he doing? He was acting out in his flesh in that moment. And so Jesus is correcting him. And he says, when you do that, your father, the devil. Why? Because you're acting like that father, not like the one in heaven. And so we always have a father. We just got to be choosing which one we're pursuing today. When I pursue my own, and anybody in here that's a dad understands that I think the first thing that has to go as a dad is selfishness. The first thing, right? Like, uh, they, they so many times I'm like, oh, man, I'd like to go get. And then JJ be like, Daddy, I need new shoes. I'm like, you didn't need new shoes that bad, right? I mean, they're pretty good, right? Right? But no, never. Like, and my wife will tell you, like, I just, I can't. My baby needs something, that's what I'm going to go get, right? So the first thing that has to go as a dad is selfishness. Now listen, some of you guys have been dads for longer than I've been alive. So I ain't teaching you nothing new today. I've only been at this for about six years and seven years, and I can tell you there's a lot of days that I'm like, okay, I need help, Lord, because this morning was one. JJ was on one. She was crying every five seconds, and I'm going, Jesus, help me. And my wife's looking at me like, you need to help me right now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I got this. Maybe. And so I know you guys have been at this a long time, but I, I'm telling you this morning, the first thing that has to go in order for us to be a good dad is selfishness. We can't be selfish. We can't desire something for ourselves more than we desire for our kids. I'll always say this. I want my kids floor to be my ceiling, right? I want to start them off on my shoulders. Not, uh, not equal with me. Shoot, no, I didn't work hard in my life so that they could get the same thing that I got. My parents did the same thing. They worked hard so that they would give me a better opportunity to be able to be a success in life. And that doesn't always mean big house, big car, big boat. That means they wanted to instill the very principles of Christ into my life in such a way that I could carry that on. Why? Because that's way more important. Let's be honest. I could die broke tomorrow. And that's okay, as long as I've instilled Christ. Why? Because it's his kingdom first, right? So what, is, what has our attention, right? In our lives, we always are looking at something, right? If, uh, the old adage, like if a race car driver's driving, it's, it, the car's always going where he's looking, right? That's what they always say. Now, I've never driven a race car, so I can't tell you. But I have driven a minivan. Uh, many a times, okay? And I can tell you, if I'm going down the street and there's a deer off to the right or off to the left, my car is going to begin to go to the right or to the left because my eyeballs are on the deer and not on the road in front of me. Okay, my wife laughs at me all the time because I'll be like, oh, deer. <laughs> and she's like, David. <laughs> but now my wife is the first one. She'll be like, oh, hawk. Oh, deer. Oh, rabbit. Like, <laughs> she ain't driving. She got a good point. She's not driving. But what happens is that wherever my eyes are, it steers me. It steers my life, right? Why did Jesus say you don't be led by your sight but by faith? Simply because it's too easy on earth. It's too easy on earth for my eyeballs to slip away from the one that is and go right down to CNN, Fox, whatever, and listen to them for about five seconds. Your whole world is just going, 
It's melting. The whole earth is ending. It's a nuclear wars coming. Like, man, doom and gloom. Like, hey, bro, I, I'd rather watch a Cartoon Network. Like, give me Scooby-Doo again. Like, uh, forget this Fox News stuff. They, t- the world should be ended 22 years ago, according to them. Everything's got to be because they're trying to sell something. They have to sell something. If they don't, then it's uh, boring, right? Hey, life is good today. You can't sell that. Uh, okay, yeah, you're right. It's not Mayberry. We can't do this every day like Fox News got on there. Man, it's a good day today. Stocks were up. Thank you, Jesus. Right? But instead, oh, man, tomorrow the stocks are going to. doesn't matter if they were up today. They don't care about that. That doesn't sell good. So instead, we got to show every car chase around the world. We got to show. It's like, quit. What are your eyes fixed to? Because whatever your eyes are fixed to, you're running toward it. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. (laughs) That's in Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Remove your foot from evil. Well, it's not all like everything I do is not this like mad, crazy evil. Like I'm not out running around on my wife. I'm not out, you know, killing people. But what is the evil? Man, my m- evil for me could simply be doing something out of the will of God. Simply doing something that he didn't ask me to do. Simply, you know, whatever. It could be wasting my time. You know, what I mean, whatever. It could be anything. But he said, look straight ahead and let your eyelids look straight before you. Why? Because if you can keep your eyes on him, it's amazing that as you walk, who's coming behind you? There's always somebody coming behind you. Always. H, you know that, right? Tommy, you know that. Like the men around you guys, they're always looking at you. Why? Because that's what God instilled us to do. Called us to lead people. There there are always people looking. Now, they may not be direct, but somebody's watching. You're at work, and you say you love Jesus? They watching. They watching, 100%, okay? So, snags come when our eyes look away from our purpose, right? Snags come when our eyes look away. So, I'm out there. I'm fishing. Oh, yeah. You know, somebody else says, oh, I got a bite. I'm home. Where? Where? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where were you casting, right? I got to get there. What happens? Well, now... I done snagged my stuff over 32 lily pads trying to get back over to what was going on on your side of the boat when I should have been worried about what was going on my side of the boat. That was the nice big old fat hole right here that God created for me. And I'm like, okay, Facebook out there. I'm like, oh, where? Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're doing it over there. They're do- oh, okay, let me cast over there. And God said, I didn't call you to be over there. I called you to be right over here. But I'm so concerned about everything else that's going on in our lives that when Fox News said, oh, no, oh, God, how about we cast over there? Okay, uh, there's a big one over there. Yeah, yeah, somebody else caught a big one. God didn't call you to catch that big one. God called you to fish in your pond. God called you to fish in your hole. And if you've ever fished with bass fishing or any, anybody that's ever fished, if you got two people on a boat, three people on a boat, even worse, Somebody going to fish over you. It's going to happen. You start catching fish, and I'm usually on the front catching the fish. I don't know how that works, but it's usually true. I'll be on the front of the boat fishing. All of a sudden, what happens? <laughs> right over my head. Uh, golly, Josiah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I want to get in on the action, right? If somebody sees me catching, they're going to throw in on my side of the boat. And so, listen, guys. Don't get so so caught up on the fact that somebody else is catching. God has exactly what you need on your path. Your path is set before you. Your path is the one that you should be running. Don't get worried about what Tommy's doing. You worry about what you're doing. Don't get worried about what Josiah's doing. You be worried about what you're doing. I'm going to worry about me. I can tell you that. I got enough to worry about. JJ, you enough, baby. Daddy loves you. Okay, you're enough, especially this morning. So snacks come whenever we're, we're looking elsewhere, right? Snacks come whenever I'm, I'm out there and I'm doing my thing, but man, I just took my eyes off the one. 
I took my eyes off the, the one that is. And I put my eyes on the things of the world. Snags come. And they're going to come. Look, there are unforeseen obstacles. Let the best sonar out there. And some of y'all have some really nice boats. I've been on a couple of them. Some of y'all have some really nice boats. And they got this really advanced sonar. Guess what? You still going to get some snags in life. You can see everything out there on these sonar, man. I mean, I could, I watch these guys on TV now. They flip it out. They're like, oh, yeah, there's a 10-pounder right there. Oh, yeah, there he is. That's playing a video game. That's not even fishing anymore. Like, at some point in time, we got we to gotta get back to fishing. But it's amazing. But they can see every tree. And guess what? Even though these professionals can see every tree, everything, guess what? They still get snags. All these financial people that say, oh, the... The stuff's, but guess what? They're still missing on the stock market. They're still missing on the housing market. They're still, why? Because they're not being led by the one. The Holy Spirit is, and I will always say this, he's the greatest businessman in this planet. He knows the future from the past. And so guess what? He worked my end to my beginning. He knows exactly what I need in my life. I just got to look to him. In my life, what am I listening? What am I seeing? What are our ears hearing? It says, Mark 4, 24, it says, Then he said to them, Take heed to what you hear. The same measure you use it, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Why? Because if you're hearing, you're doing exactly what he told you to do. If you're hearing, the, I, I talked to Tommy about different stuff in the oil field a lot of times. My like, man, what are you hearing? Why? Because I want to hear what's going on in the world. I need to know what's out there. And he said, man, you know, fossil fuels or, you know, gases or safety or whatever. Why? Because there are things going on that there are future prospects. There are possibilities for things to be earned or made if I can incline my ear. If I knew I was going to walk out in the street and now I'm from California, right? And so we walked a little more than we do in Texas, especially New Caney. I don't, I don't even hardly walk around the camp, let alone walk down the street. California, they actually had sidewalks, and it was, you know, it's just a little different, okay? So, and I know if you go into Houston, it's more that way. But if you, if you live in, in rural Texas, not that way. But I can promise you, before you step out in that thing, what's it going to be doing? It's going to be chirping at you. You're going to go into the street and things going to be chirping at you the whole time. They help blind people, right? So that they can cross the street too, which is crazy to think about. I mean, I, I don't like crossing the street with my eyeballs, let alone without them. But that starts to chirp at you to keep you from danger. The Holy Spirit's the same way. Immediately, I step off that curb. Beep, 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 beep. It's going to let me know. Hey, bro. Danger's coming. Can I be listening? Or there's a snag under the water that you can't see. I can promise you if the Titanic knew that iceberg was there, it would have made a little bit of a left, a little bit of a right. And it could have happened. Holy Spirit. But there are lots of icebergs in our life where we're not careful, we'll run right into them. And dads, listen, when you run into an iceberg, guess what? Your kids run into an iceberg. When you run into an iceberg in your life, it causes those young people to see that. Now, again, they have an option. Learn or repeat. Learn or repeat, just like you do. You have that same option. I tried this before, it didn't work. Okay, try it again, didn't work. I could try it again, or I can do something different. Now, there were some times in my life where... I hit the iceberg a few times, and I kept bumping my head on the iceberg, kept bumping. But the fact is, at the end of the day, I got to learn. I got to adjust in life. That's what it's all about. As a daddy, I can tell you this. From the few years of experience I have being a dad, one of the greatest things I've learned is adjust. Try something different. When Naya, as a three-year-old, was so frustrating because all he wanted to do was cry. All he wanted, 
And I'll be like, baby, I don't know what to do for him. He doesn't communicate with me. He doesn't talk to me. All he wants to do is hang on me and cry at me. And I'm like, Lord, you've got to help me adjust. Do something different. If you keep doing the same thing and you're getting the same result, you've got to try something new. It's time to try something new, right? So, daddies, I'll tell you this today. Try something new. I don't care if that kid's 55 years old. They still an opportunity. There's still a chance. Why? Because I'm still on this earth. They're still on this earth. I can do it. Now, not all fathers were great. I get it. 100%. I was blessed with a good dad after my bad dad, right? I had a, 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 a good dad. So, but not all of us did. And I get that. I get that. Not all of us had somebody that I'd be like, oh, man, I could just, yeah, this man, he just, not all of us have that demarcation place in our life to say, this man took me under his wing and he helped me. That doesn't give us an excuse. That's, that's where the, the problem lies in this generation now. We feel like that gives me an excuse to act out or do what I want simply because I didn't have the restraint of a dad in my life. The truth is you always had a restraint of your dad in your life right here. He was speaking to you. We just weren't tapping in. We just weren't listening because there's always a father in heaven that's trying to get and communicate to us so that we don't make those mistakes. So we don't have to be like the ones that went before us. So I say to you today, what are you listening to? What are we attracting? In our lives, we're always attracting something. Something's always being magnetized toward me. And the thing is, in our life, there's always going to be like similarities, right? Me and H get along. Why? Because we're similar. We think alike. We act alike. We're silly. But no, it's real, right? That's what we're, we're similar. Me and Tommy get along. Me and Mike get along. Why, why do we get along? Because there are similarities in our life. Now, the similarity isn't in age. It's not just in skin color. It's, what is it? It's in like interest, right? So we get along because of like interest. Me and Mitch get along. We love, both love guns, right? We get along because we have this likeness in our lives. So we're always being attracted to something. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What you focus on will be what you attract. What you focus on, what you're going to attract. So whatever my eyes are fixated on, right, I'm going to attract that. How do I know that? If I went like this, everybody immediately went, right? Because I, that's what I did. So if you're watching me and I look somewhere else, guess what? The person that was watching you is now watching whatever you were watching. Same with our kids. The moment I begin to do something in my life, my kids are going to begin to emulate that. Good or bad. <laughs> That's what we have to remember as dads. Good or bad. And there are some things that I do that are bad and my kids have picked up on. Sometimes there might be a slip of the tongue. And Naya will be the first one in the back of the car. <laughs> he goes, go ahead and say what daddy said. Don't say what daddy said. That's a bad thing. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. But I can promise you this, just like that song, at the end of the night, what are they going to do? They're going to sit down and pray with daddy. Daddy going to have to explain to him, okay, that's probably not the best thing to, to say. But because daddy did it, they did it. Because the one that was in front of them, that's leading them, did it. Hey, I, I, he did it. He did it. Why is it so important that we have good presidents? Why is it so important that we have good politicians, good judges, good? Why? What they're doing, the rest of their constituents are doing. What a leader does in moderation, their followers will do in excess. When me as a dad, it could be anything, say a slip of the tongue. Okay, I'll just use that because that is something that happens in my life. Forgive me. God, so me as a dad, if I slip with the tongue, okay, I can promise you, let that kid get outside of the umbrella of daddy. What's he going to do? He's going to be like, no, blue, 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 blue. How do I know that? Yesterday on the zip line, right? We out there on the zip line. <laughs> get ready to throw these two Hispanic boys off the zip line. 
it was colorful. Let's just say that. They were scared, and it was colorful. And one of the beautiful young ladies that works with us has, a, let's say, a sheltered life. It's not sheltered to the point that it's bad, but it's sheltered. She's not seen a lot of that. And I can tell you this. They my balls? We're like this. <laughs> Why? Because she's never been exposed to that before. But this kid had been exposed to that his whole life. That's all he's ever known. But get outside of the umbrella of authority. Get outside of the umbrella of daddy, of ma, and what happens? <laughs> like a machine gun. The whole way down. I was laughing because they were saying up there, Josiah's laughing because he's at the backside of the zip line and they still going. <laughs> 350 foot later, they still <laughs> say it every colorful language. Why? They're just emulating what they see. They're just emulating the things that have been around in their life. So now they're going to do it in moderation and excess, right? Because they saw people in front of them. They were doing it maybe in moderation. It was maybe there were times it could be drinking. It could be anything. It could be smoke. It could be whatever. I don't care what the sin, non-sin, whatever it is. If somebody's watching you and you do something, it could be the smallest little thing, but it may be a huge thing in their life. That's why a pastor always says, let your, what is it? Let your something be guided by love. Let your liberties, your liberties, right? Let your liberties. So there's some things in my life that I may not see as a bad thing, but H, that may not be a good thing for him. So as his friend, as his fellow brother in Christ, I don't do those things in front of H. Right? Because of love age. That limits my liberties. There may be things that I think are okay. Maybe it's not good for my wife. I don't do them. It's not good for my wife. Especially to the multiple children that I have in my family. I have to be so careful to what I do, what I say, how I say it. I could say something just slightest bit wrong. And that one right there, she's going to cry. She's going to let daddy know, ah, that wasn't the right way. Now, don't get me wrong. There's definitely manipulation that's happening there. <laughs> As a daddy, the greatest gift you'll ever have is discernment, okay? You got to know when to tell them, be quiet, and when to sit down. And so, listen, I'm so grateful for the fact that in my life, I'm listening. I'm seeing. I'm paying attention to. The law of magnetism. John Maxwell says this, the ninth law and 21 irrefutable laws. If you're a business owner, I strongly encourage you to read this book. It's, it's one of the best books I've ever written in my life. It, it's, a, it, it's read. If, I didn't write it. I wish I did because I'd have the paycheck to back it up. But um, one of the greatest books I've ever read. Why? Simply because this. He teaches you laws of leadership that will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. It's incredible. But he talked about the law of magnetism. And one of the laws of leadership is magnetism. I'm attracting something. And I said this. I added a little bit to it because I think there's more that can go to it. The law of magnetism simply says this. John Maxwell, ninth law of 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. You are attracted to what you are or what you believe yourself to be. Because there are some times... I mean, you experienced, you told me about a man that, that put you under your, his wing, right? Taught you um, chemical uh, engineering, right? Okay, so you knew that's what you wanted. I had to get myself around a man. I had to be attracted to a man that could teach me that thing. You weren't a chemical engineer by trade, but you was going to be a chemical engineer because I'm going to get around somebody that's going to teach me this thing, right? H, I don't know where you learned to cut trees. Where you learn to cut trees? Yeah, H, H was magnetized to himself. That's what, it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> H was attracted to himself. I'll teach myself. They wouldn't know YouTube in your day, H. I know that. You learn the hard way is what you're saying. So, but what happens? I'm always going to be attracted to what I'm like or what I want to be, right? Why is this generation so caught up in social media? So caught up in celebrities because they want to be that, right? We all want to be rich and wealthy, and I, I don't want to be famous because then I have all these weirdos always looking at my, me and my family. I think that's crazy. Go somewhere with your stupid cameras. 
But like I care what the Kardashians are doing. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> They're dating a new one. Who cares? Like okay, chalk it up. Put another notch in her belt. I don't care. Like whatever. But if but why are they attracted to it? Because it's constantly being bombarded in front of their face. All they see, all they know is social media. And so be careful what you allow your kids to see. Be careful what you allow your kids to hear. Be careful what you allow your kids to be attracted to. I'm going to close with this. In fishing, and, and some of us men in here fish. In fishing, there's one thing that I know for sure. And I learned it in Texas. It was actually where I learned it. It was on the street. There's an old saying, match the hat, right? And that all the fishermen immediately said, hmm. why? Because they knew exactly what I was saying. Match the hat simply means this, emulate whatever they're eating. If you can emulate whatever they're eating, you're going to catch fish. If I can be whatever it is that people want me to be in that moment, they're going to eat. They're going to take the bait. The problem is the world will always give them flashy. It's always flash, super, oh, huge, big, better, bang, shh, right? You go to concerts, and I mean, it's like, it, it's crazy to me. Me and Tony went to a concert. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, me, and, me and Tony went to a concert, Journey, right? I was so excited because I love Journey, and I was like, yes, I'm going to go. And it was, uh, it was crazy. I mean, instead of putting out lighters, people put out cell phones with flashlights on it. Bro, I mean, that whole stadium was just bright. <laughs> Looked like someone was putting torches out everywhere, right? But it's, it's always bigger and better and flashier. And guess how many people leave their chains? None. They're attracted to it. Super, super attracted to it. I can take this spinnerbait right here, right? Take that spinnerbait. It's flashy. Flashy. It goes through the water, it's flashing. Right? <laughs> It's flashy. Fish are attracted to it. And there's a lot of fish. It's amazing, H, when you watch them tanks, them guys will throw that bait out there. All them fish are going to stop and look at it, right? They're going to stop and look at it. It's flashy. Uh, nah, that ain't the real thing. That ain't the real thing. You take a shad, you throw it on there, and just think about this. This is the thought I had. A shad on a hook is a living sacrifice. Stick that thing on there. It's one sole purpose. It's to please the one that's casting it out. It's to do its job, which is to catch the biggest, baddest fish that I casted them to, right? It's a living sacrifice. Our sole purpose in life is to do the will of the Father. Our sole purpose in life is to do, and what does that mean? Be the best dad we can be. To be the best brother we can be. To be the best sister we can be. Mom, whatever the cost, if it means that I give my life for it, that's what he's calling me to. And so today, I want you to know something. If you want to be a fisher of men, the greatest way to catch fish is to look as real and as close to the real thing. The thing that matches the real thing the best is always going to catch the most fish. If we're not careful, we flashy, we'll take this thing, we'll look like a flash in the pan, right? There's a reason they have that saying. It's a flash in the pan. It was here today, gone tomorrow. We've seen that in church everywhere, right? I mean, well, there's lots of flashes in the pan. They attract lots of stuff. The problem is nothing's getting hooked. Nothing has stability. Why? Because there's nothing that's sticking. It's flashy. It's great. It's loud. It's getting everybody's attention. Hey, look at me. But nobody's life's being changed. Nobody's being brought to the boat to meet the master. Instead, they're seeing a cheap imitation of the master, and they're going, no thanks. I've seen that before. I've seen that before. 
Why? Because if you go to a lake, I can promise you every bass you cast at has seen a thousand lures. <laughs> Especially in Texas. <laughs> every fish you throw at has seen that same lure 32 times. Oh yeah, that's Walmart aisle 32B. I know exactly. I know that one. Okay. I ain't falling for that again. Right? If we're not careful, guys. We're a lure that's super flashy. That looks good. It's loud. It talks about a lot of stuff. But it has nothing that's going to hook them. It has nothing that's going to bring them to the one that can actually change their lives. And so I leave you that this morning. Dads, be careful what you're listening to. Be careful what you're paying attention to. Be careful the things that are grabbing your attention. Because those are the things that's going to guide their lives. Because it's guiding your life. And again, this is not about biological. This is about a man that chose to step up. My dad didn't have to be my dad. He chose to. I don't know why, <laughs> but he did. <laughs> Especially for my brother. Thank you, Jesus. Help him. <laughs> Pray for him. <laughs> seriously. No, seriously. <laughs> but at the end of the day, all it is about is can we emulate the real thing? Can we make it more like Him? And if we can be more like Him, I promise you, there will be so many more people that come into the kingdom of heaven simply because we're emulating the real thing. It's not going to be a knee-jerk reaction to... I don't want people to have a knee-jerk reaction to the Jesus in my life. I want them to have a reaction that says, I ain't never heard nothing like that. I ain't never seen nothing like that. The woman at the well... Why did she go back and save her old city? She met a man that knew everything about her. She met a man that offered her something that she had never seen before. She didn't give, she didn't get the the Walmart 32 aisle <laughs> one dollar special bait. She got the real thing. And when she tasted and seen, there was no denying that she came in contact with the one that was going to change her life. So, men, listen, baby, JJ, come here. Yeah, yeah, JJ, she always biting at the bit to help daddy. Listen, I want you to hold that right here. Yep, well, you got to face the guys. All right, guys, listen, I want to give you guys something this morning just so you remember this tone. This one's kind of, so you can have, yeah. But guys, I want you guys just to come on up, grab one. If you know somebody that wasn't here today, Go ahead and give that to them. Uh, just, we'll just start at the front. Dad, you started. Tommy, you started. H, you started. Uh, I just want to give you guys, uh, it's just, there's buzz baits and there's, there's spinner baits, okay? And just uh, pick one. And again, this is just to remind us that we are to emulate the real thing. Yeah, young people, if you guys have a dad, I, I bought 50 of them. So once they're gone, they're gone. Love you guys, but... Uh, I just want you guys to know that I love you and that I want you guys to be able to hang this up somewhere. It's a real hook, so it will stick you. Ask the lady that was checking me out. It took her five million years. She was so scared of the hooks that she literally, each one she picked up and she was like, and then rang it. I was like, lady, just put it on the scanner. Ring. I, I, it was, hey, listen, that was patience, Ms. D. The 32 people behind me was the ones that needed patience. And they were frustrated. But, guys, again, I just want you guys to understand and know that the greatest way in your life to change people's lives is to emulate Christ as good as you can. And when you do that, I promise you, it will never be a question. It will never be a thought. They will always know. They will always know. We love you guys. Again, if, if listen, they're here. If after you're done, ladies, you know, your dad, your brother, you know, there's lots of dads in our lives that we should honor. Honor is simply just giving celebration to. You know, I wake up this morning, JJ, she get, yeah, you can put them in the back as they leave. They can grab them, JJ. Uh, but JJ, she going to make me a card. And it was hilarious. Now she's leaving, so I could I could be able to say, oh, she's still there, but she'll be all right. 
She made me this card. She's like, Daddy, I made you this great card. I get in the car. I'm like, okay, baby, we're trying to get everything together, you know, make sure I have the notes, make sure I had everything in order, right? So I get in the car, and she slips it on the dash. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, start to drive. And I, I pull it out. It's like, you're the best. You're the greatest. You're the nicest. Big heart mom. And I was like, She's like, oh, that was the wrong one. No, that was the wrong one. <laughs> she was not happy. She gave me the wrong one. But I had to laugh at that. That's, that's about right. Well, she had it right, though. When she said she was the greatest, I said, well, at least Daddy did one good thing. He picked a good mom for you guys. So, But I, am, I just want you guys to know that I'm so grateful for you. Pastor's so grateful for you. As we go through this day, it's a good day just to celebrate. It's a good day to honor. I know that sometimes this is a hard day because of the fact that some of us weren't biological fathers. Some of us have lost our children. Some of, But you know what? Just for the fact that we have opportunity to give thanks to our Father in Heaven, that's the big thing. So we just thank Him this morning. All right, guys. This time we're going to have an opportunity to give. We're going to go ahead and ask the guys to come up. We do have some announcements today. If you guys have checks, go ahead and make your checks out. Uh, all the stuff's in front of you. I have to remember that at this one. The other one doesn't do that. So uh, I am grateful for you guys again. And again, giving isn't about the church. I hope you guys understand that. Giving's never about the church. It's always about you. It's always about your relationship with the Father and, and trusting Him. That's why He said 10%. He wants you to trust him. A good dad is trustworthy, and he's trustworthy. I promise you that. So today as we give, believing God for jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. We are grateful for the success in the kingdom, and I have lots of success stories right here. June 19th, the funeral service for Donald Cochran will be